So hello and welcome everyone. My name is Jadal Sanya, and in this video, we are going to solve the problem nuts and bolts problem. Okay. So the problem st statement is pretty straightforward. So let's try to understand the problem statement first, and then we'll try to solve this question. So here you will be given a set of n nuts and bolts, and there is one to one mapping between nuts and bolts. So there will be two arrays containing nuts and bolts, and you have to match the nuts and bolts efficiently. Comparison of a nut to another nut or bolt to another bolt is not allowed. It means the nut can only be compared with the bolt, and the bolt can only be compared with the nut to see which one is bigger or smaller. Okay, so basically here you will be given the elements, uh, the ordering of the elements, and uh, this all the symbols will be present as an array. So here you have exclamation mark, and then you have uh, hashtag dollar percentage and percent star. Question mark at the rate and XOR. So basically, this is the ordering in which you have to match the characters from both the arrays. You will be given a given a character array named as nuts, and one more character array will be there named as bolts. So you have to uh, match all the characters in this manner from nuts and bolts. Okay, one element from the nut and same element from the bolt should be taken. So if this is the example number one, in example number one you can see. So let's try to understand with example one. So here is the ordering of the symbols. This is the ordering, and this ordering is completely ASCII-based uh, value. Okay, so the ASCII-based value ordering has been mentioned over here. And if you find the ASCII value of each and every characters, you will find that they are arranged in increasing order of the ASCII value. And this is the order of symbols that they are requesting to be printed in the output. Okay, so n equals to five nuts are a bolt are. So you take the character from nuts, you take a character from bolt, same character, and you Printed in the output, but the output ordering should be according to this. Okay, so we can see at the rate is there, percentage is there, dollar is there, hashtag is there, XOR is there. Okay, but if we see the ordering, so what is the ordering over here? This is the ordering. So let me just copy it and let's take this for a reference. So this is the ordering that we know. So we know in the ordering there is exclamation mark, but we don't see any exclamation mark. There is a hashtag. Yes, there is a hashtag over here. So in the output, first of all, the hashtag will be printed one from the Uh, nuts and one from the bolts. Then what do we have? We have dollar. So dollar will be printed because nuts and bolts both of them contain dollar. Then we have ampersand. So here we have ampersand and here also ampersand. Uh, sorry, this is percentage, right? Here we have ampersand. So next uh, in the nuts and bolts we don't have ampersand. A multiplication is not there. Question mark is not there. At the rate is there? Yes, at the rate is there. So now at the rate will be there in the output. Then what do we have? XOR, XOR, right? So you have to match the characters from nuts and bolts and print it in the output according to the ordering of ASCII value. So that is what the question is trying to say. Now let's try to think how we can solve this question. So the first approach that comes to my mind is that as we know that the ordering that has been given over here, the ordering that the question is mentioning is an increasing order of ASCII value. Okay, if this is in increasing order of ASCII value, then don't you think that we can basically sort the nuts array and sort the bolts array, and then we can print both the elements from nuts and bolts, and then that would be your output, right? If you have thought of that that approach, then you are absolutely correct. The first approach that comes to uh, existence is that sorting both the arrays, sorting nuts and bolts array, okay? But here, what will be the time complexity? The time complexity of this approach will be around n log n. Let's say you are using merge sort, quick sort, and depending depending upon the uh, so-called sorting algorithm that you will be using, let's say if I am using quick sort, we'll be getting a time complexity of n log n and the space complexity of log n, right? So this will be around our uh, this will be all around our sorting algorithm. So this is one of the approach you can apply the sorting algorithm from scratch. You can use the inbuilt functions as well. But I would not recommend using the inbuilt functions to sort both the arrays. You can try out the uh, sorting using our merge and quick sort. Write down the algorithm. Just that would be a quick revision for you guys, right? You might have forgotten how the quick sort algorithm was written and how the merge sort algorithm was written. Okay, so you can try try out that. But what is efficient than this? Can we do better than this end log n? Let's try to analyze. So here, this is our approach number two, and this is let's see what this approach number two is trying to say. So in the approach number two. as we know that the ordering should always be following which is mentioned in the question this should be the ordering okay fine 
so what about what if i find the frequency of each and every character according to this ordering according to this ordering what if i find the frequency of each and every uh, so called characters <clears throat> wouldn't that be helpful yes so what you can do you can create a map of this symbols and the symbols inside the map will be stored according to their ascii value in the increasing order that that is very much important okay so what i will do let's imagine i have created a map i will just represent this character as my key and i will just copy it okay so you guys can uh, get an idea so this is my map over here and the ordering is maintained inside the map okay and this are the keys over here and the value array i have not just shown but this is the value array okay and initialize all the values with zero let's see all the values are zero let's take the example number 1 okay so here is our example number 1 so n equals to 5 nuts and bolts okay fine so this is our map this is our array so what i will do first of all i'll start the iteration over the nuts array and i'll find out the frequency of each and every character and for sure you will be getting a matching character in the bolts array as well there will be a matching character in, in both of them so you don't need to worry about whether that character will be present in both the arrays or not no you don't need to worry about that thing it will be present in both nuts and bolts according to the question Okay, so I'll start the iteration over the nuts array and I'll calculate the frequency. Okay, so initially all the frequencies will be what zero. This is why this is our map and this many characters are present. So first of all we have what an m percent. So go to m percent, add the frequency as one. Then what do we have? We have percentage, add the frequency of percentage. Then we have dollar, add the frequency as one. Then we have hashtag, add the frequency as one. Now we have xor, add the frequency as one. Okay, and rest all the characters. will be having zero as their frequency okay fine now what we can do we can take the reference of this map which we have created right so what i will do i will iterate over this map and what i will do for all the characters for whichever character i get the frequency as greater than zero i'll print two times those character i will basically input those character in my nuts and bolts right basically we are not returning something or we don't need to print anything in the output driver code will print for us we simply need to rearrange this nuts and bolts okay so what i will do whenever i see a character basically over here inside my nuts and bolts uh, whenever i see a map carrying a character which is having frequency greater than 1 i will make apply those changes over here so i'll just remove this characters over here okay because we have we are aware which characters are present in nuts and bolts because that has been mentioned inside our frequency map okay in order to iterate what i will do i will take one more uh, pointer so that it points to the indexes of nuts and bolts okay so hashtag is one so i'll print hashtag over here i'll put hashtag both the, at both the places the next what do we have we have dollar it is having frequency greater than 1 so a dollar over here dollar over here the next what do we have we have percent i mean percentage its frequency is one so both the uh, position will contain this is frequency 0 this is frequency 0 0 and this is one so add the rate over here next is what xor this is xor so i'll be printing over here right so j will be pointing to the empty position inside our nuts and bolts array fine and that's it right so what about the time complexity what can you say about the time complexity how many iterations did we do we made one iteration to fill up this uh, map right so one iteration was required and what is the size of the nuts or bolts array it is equivalent to n so i'll write down the time complexity order of n and what about this map so map contains limited number of characters it will not vary according to your test case size right so this is going to be a constant iteration over the map so the overall time complexity i can observe here is order of n and what about the space complexity the space you will say okay we have utilized some space in order to match the frequency but how how much space are you utilizing for every test case are you changing the size of the map no you have a static sized map right that contains all the symbols so basically the space complexity in this scenario comes out to be order of fun isn't it beautiful right so earlier it was n log n and now we have reduced the time and space to linear n order of fun okay fine so that was it for uh, the explanation part now let's try to implement this and let's see what do we get okay so what was our task first of all uh, i will be creating a map okay so map will be required see now map contains keys and values right so what i will do i'll not create a map that is provided by so called our 
uh, STL or collections. See, we have limited symbols over here. We have limited numbers in our ASCII table, 256 around, right? So I'll create a frequency array of 256 so that all the symbols, all the characters can be accommodated. I know, I don't know the ASCII value of these symbols, right? So I can use the general range of ASCII values from 0 to 255, right? So is equal to new int, I will say 256. Now I will start the iteration over the nuts array. So I will use a for each loop, right? So nuts and what I will do inside the frequency array, I will go at what? I will go at the respective character and uh, what I will do, I will change it into integer. I need the ASCII value and I will increment its frequency. So here I am using Java, so arrays are initialized with default values. You can initialize the array based on your programming language. So now I have mentioned the frequency of every character which characters are present inside our frequency array. Now, one more iteration to populate the nuts and bolts array. So what I will do, I will take a J pointer that will be pointing to the position inside my array nuts and bolts. I'll start the iteration over the frequency array. I is lesser than 256 and I plus plus. And if I find the frequency of I is what greater than zero, if any character is found by having frequency greater than zero, then that means that character needs to be placed inside our nuts and bolts at the Jth position. So nuts at jth position, it will be containing what? It will be containing the character i. And uh, nuts at the, I mean bolts at the jth position, it will be containing the character i. But now you have to see that this j pointer should move forward after populating the jth index in nuts and bolts. So I'll increment in the second step at line number 59. And that's pretty much. So let's say to just compile run and let's see what do we get. Have we made any errors or not? So working properly and it is working properly. So let's try to submit. And we can see that the problem has been successfully submitted. So that was it for in this video. I hope you really enjoyed the solution. And if you really enjoyed the solution, do it the like button and comment down your approach in the comment section below. So till then, uh, keep coding. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Thank you for watching.